It is my distinct honor and privilege to welcome you to the convocation for Brush University's Master of Science in Nursing Pre-Licensure Generalist Entry Master's Program. My name is Dr. Monique Reed, and I am honored to be the Assistant Dean for Generalist Education here at Brush. It is my pleasure to welcome all of you graduates, faculty, family, friends, and guests to the College of Nursing. I would like to thank all of the speakers and participants of this program and those behind the scenes that have made this convocation possible. There are a number of staff members that have worked tirelessly to transition our convocation to a virtual platform. And I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you. Now also, when I mention those that are working behind the scenes, I want to acknowledge each of you. As a daughter of a Jamaican immigrant that raised me as a single mother, I know the importance and strength of family, extended family, and non-biological kinship bonds of chosen family and friends. At this time, I want to thank all of you, the family, friends, and various support systems that have been there for this very special group of graduates. I believe I can safely say that none of us know what it means to go through nursing school during a pandemic. But we do know the importance of caring and standing in the gap for the ones that we care for the most. I don't know about you, but this group of nursing students has provided me with more inspiration and a renewed passion from the strength, the humility, and the compassion that they have exhibited during this year than they will ever know. And I have a feeling that some of that comes from you. So thank you. Thank you for sharing this special group of new nurses with us, the Rush family. Now to the graduates. Today is our opportunity to celebrate your achievements and officially welcome you as graduates. We celebrate you as Masters of Science in Nursing degree graduates. Rush College of Nursing continues to graduate not only well-prepared new nurses, but also individuals that will become the next leaders in nursing. All of you chose to change the direction of your careers to enter the profession of nursing. I congratulate you on making a very important decision. This is a time like no other in my lifetime when to be a nurse was to be essential to the very existence of our society. Now the World Health Organization Director General said, and I quote, nurses and midwives are the backbone of every health system. In 2020, we're calling on all countries to invest in nurses and midwives as part of their commitment to health for all. And with that, he declared 2020 the year of the nurse and the nurse midwife. 2020 was also declared to be the year of perfect vision, foresight, and clear mind's eye. In some way, this has proven to be true, but not at all as we expected. This year has exposed many deep-seated ugly wounds in this country. Once community spread of the coronavirus was declared in Chicago and the subsequent shortage of personal protective equipment, we transitioned all of your courses and clinical instruct instruction from the live environment um, into the remote learning platform. That was in mid-March. We watched within weeks most of the United States under a stay at home or shelter in place order by mid-April. By May 11th, the Journal of the American Medical Association published an article declaring that the global pandemic known as COVID-19 has put a spotlight on health disparities and health inequities within this country with the most pervasive disparities observed among black and Latino individuals and communities. And where data was uh, existed among African, I'm sorry, American Indian, Alaska Native and Pacific Islander populations also experienced health disparities. They went on to cite Chicago and New York as areas in which health inequities were particularly prevalent. 
What I can tell you is that unfortunately, through the work that they've done in exploring the prevalence of disease during nursing school, cohort 24 already has written about and studied and presented on the racial disparities in health outcomes. Now it's important that we take a moment though to clarify a point that may not have been made or openly accepted before Memorial Day 2020. The racial disparities in health outcomes are not due to one's inherent race. The racial disparities in health outcomes are due to racism, systemic racism. And it is important that we listen, hear, and understand when people say Black Lives Matter. In Chicago, Black and Latino neighborhoods have fewer mortgages dispersed than white communities, which then makes the residents more transient and decreases the neighborhood investment that's made by companies. They have poor air quality due to industrial companies being moved from wealthy white neighborhoods to poorer neighborhoods with the associated respiratory diseases like asthma and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. These same communities have more food deserts with associated obesity, higher rates of diabetes, diabetes mellitus type 2, and hypertension. Also, with fewer retail shopping areas, there are fewer jobs available in these communities. Chicago has constructed public transportation routes that are less reliable in Black and Latino neighborhoods which then makes it difficult to commute to and from jobs outside the community. Now, with all of this knowledge in mind, on May 25th, 2020, these nursing students watched the, the killing of George Floyd with all of America. This occurring in the midst of a COVID-19 pandemic. As Americans, we collectively experienced a time in history in which the nation came to an abrupt stop with the closure of businesses and schools. We all stopped and watched the murder of a man as he was complying with police. We watched the subsequent nationwide protests and call for action related to police reform and social injustice. Now the American Public Health Association, which is the largest international organization to focus on public health and policy issues, declared both racism and police violence as public health crises and released a call to action. But when I looked to cohort 24 and when I saw them, I saw in them a strength of a group of nursing students, a strength that was leading the call for action. This group of students were working, whether in person or virtually, they were working at the forefront of healthcare being healthcare heroes in their own right. They were doing what they could to address the disparities in health outcomes and police brutality and systemic racism. When I personally saw the life fade from Mr. Floyd's body and the subsequent murders from police brutality that we became aware of in the days after his murder, when I thought that I could give no more, I was inspired by Cohort 24. I was inspired to do more and to be more. Cohort 24, you have made this an exciting time to be a nurse. You are at the center of improving health care, whether it be in the United States, in the state of Illinois, the city of Chicago, or here through our institutional commitment on the west side of Chicago. I personally want to thank you for answering the call to action and being unwavering in your commitment to creating a more just society. Cohort 24, you have spent the last two years preparing for this moment, the beginning of your next professional journey, and you are absolutely ready. You are prepared and you are capable. You are our future. Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us for our virtual convocation ceremony. 
First, I'd like to extend a sincere congratulations to all of our students who are virtually gathering together here today. It is truly an honor to be part of the celebration, even if we cannot be together in person. I'd also like to commend the faculty who I know are very proud as they send you off to begin your professional lives. Your success is their success, and it's the reason they remain teachers. And of course, congratulations to your families. Where would any of us be without the constant support and guidance that we get from home? You are a special group, leaders among leaders. Many of you had a career before entering the Graduate Entry Master's Program, and the richness of your previous life experiences adds to the excellence of the school. I also know that you have varied career goals. Some of you will travel the world to serve the sick or underserved. Some of you will stay in Chicago and work in this community. Still others might go on to do policy work and advance nursing science. One thing I suspect all of you have in common though is a bit of anxiety about this next phase of life. But this is perfectly normal and may even give you the motivation to pursue even greater dreams. You are beginning your careers in healthcare at a time unlike any other in the history of our nation or our world. We are in the midst of battling a viral pandemic that is testing our healthcare system, frontline staff and citizens around the globe. Simultaneously, our nation is coming together to address the systemic racism and social injustice that has plagued communities of color for far too long, following the recent deaths of unarmed African Americans. It is important that we also acknowledge how this pandemic has disproportionately affected these communities so that we can begin the process of healing and correcting injustices. This is your time to lead the way. As nurses, you will be on the front lines of these crises and each of you can play a role in changing the future of healthcare for the better. You have the tools and the power to make meaningful change in policy, care delivery and discovery. There's never been a better time for nurses to help shape our future by testing the boundaries of the role of nursing in society. And there will be no shortage of challenges. But during your years at Rush, you receive the education and tools that you will need to be successful. I hope that as you are practicing patient-centered care and advancing your career, you will always be promoting access to care and improving the quality of health for all communities. I hope that you maintain an optimism that gives you courage for advocacy to challenge outdated modes of care, and to work toward improving outcomes across all healthcare settings. I encourage you to use your voice as nursing leaders to think and speak more broadly and inclusively about the health of populations and help us write the next chapter in American healthcare. And I urge you to speak up and take action against racial injustices in healthcare and beyond, and to always be an advocate for health equity. Do not be afraid to become a steward for the role of nurse of nurses. Use your voice and know that nursing's perspective is not only valued, it is needed. Never lose sight of the nursing leaders you are now, nor the leaders I know you are certain to become. Earlier this year, 2020 was officially declared the year of the nurse by the World Health Organization. And what a memorable time for you to begin your careers. Now, in the wake of multiple health crises, Year of the Nurse has taken on a completely new meaning. We're being tested like we never have been before. But never forget that nurses are strong, nurses are hopeful, and most importantly, nurses are resilient. We will make it through and we will be stronger than ever before. You are now entering a new phase of your lives with remarkable opportunities, and I look forward to hearing about your successes and accomplishments in the future. Remember that the outstanding reputation of the Rush Generalist Entries, Entry Master's Program is in part a reflection of the quality and hard work of the faculty, the curriculum, the learning experiences, but most importantly, the reputation of this program is a reflection of your successes and your accomplishments. Please continue to stay safe, stay in touch, and know that the College of Nursing will always be here to support you. Again, my congratulations to all of you and your families who have supported you on this journey. I wish you all the best. Hi, I'm Fred Brown, president of the Rush Presbyterian St. Luke's Nursing Alumni Board of Directors. It is my pleasure to congratulate you on completing your program. Sometime early in your program, you met someone from the Alumni Association welcoming you to campus. 
Since that time, we've partnered with your amazing faculty, supporting you every step of the way to ensure that you're successful in this program. You're now part of a class of 8,000 graduates that have completed our program dating back to 1885. No matter where my career has taken me, I've been very proud to be part of the Rush family. Rush nurses are practicing across the world. Back in 1989, I remember graduating just like you are today, being very excited being a part of the Rush family. You'll find that the Alumni Association will keep you connected to campus and as other alumni, also connecting you with students and our faculty. I encourage you to stay connected. You can stay connected just by visiting the campus, um, participating in programs, or even being a mentor to a student. On behalf of the Rush Presbyterian St. Luke's Nursing Alumni and the Board of Directors, I'd like to congratulate you on your accomplishment today. Thank you. In light of the ongoing pandemic and COVID-19 restrictions, thank you for your patience and flexibility. During these unprecedented times in our new normal, these buzzwords and phrases have defined the last seven months of our lives, but we haven't allowed them to limit what nursing means to us. We began to define nursing through teamwork during orientation and our first look at Rush. Some of us met up at Park Tavern where we compared interview stories and put faces to names finding ways to distinguish between Rachel's, Taylor's, and Liz's. If it wasn't for Denitza, rhymes with pizza, initiating our group me that day, we never would have been able to share so many photos of our pets with each other. In first term, we developed a feel for the unique language of nursing under the guidance of Tammy, Ramona, Terry, and Dr. Hamilton. Our clinical instructors exemplified patients watching us dutifully take manual blood pressures and draft countless care plans each Friday. We started to understand what time management really meant with a test, exam, or paper due every week. And sometimes we crashed on each other's couches after nights out celebrating when we finally passed a Judy exam. We never would have made it out of term one without Unbe's weekly updates on what was due, but by December, we could develop SMART goals, perform head-to-toe assessments, and we knew to always call for help first. Second term, we toiled and grew together. We could recognize Natalie's laugh from down the hall in armor, and we knew who always brought the best snacks or a power cord. We were introduced to online classes and discussion board posts, and we started to pass meds and administer injections in clinicals, that is, as long as we could recite the six rights, the drug name, the class, the mechanism of action, the uses, the adverse effects, the side effects, and the teaching points. Did I mention that we watched Judy's farm lectures on repeat whenever we could? We also developed our critical thinking skills with the introduction of the phrase, it depends. Term three and our communication skills were put to the test in order to make it through the group projects and a few more online classes. We are rarely on campus together, but our support did not waver, sympathizing with one another through emotionally heavy psych clinicals and learning to impart dignity throughout the dying process. We all got to enjoy a revitalizing breath of Chicago summer, and a few of us even found time to travel or to get married. In term four, we were excited to see each other again in class. Most of us had at least one group paper edited by Keith at this point. And in women's health, Tammy, Ramona, and Christy put us through our paces and fake labor so we could earn our front row seats to the miracle of birth. We also found our footing in public health, giving thanks to Ms. Henrietta Lacks for her contributions to science and learning to be staunch advocates for our patients. Fifth term, we were back on the units and we had a chance to hone our clinical skills in, in complex care. 
We practiced inserting IVs and we watched Lynn use her ruler calipers to reiterate that every rhythm change causes a decrease in cardiac output. We finally knew how to read EKGs and then COVID blew everything up. It was time to put our professionalism into practice. Since March 13th, all of our clinical learning has taken place via computer with a four week exception for immersion. We struggled, but did not give up on our dreams of becoming nurses. We held conversations with avatars. We helped faculty navigate the perils of Zoom and we continue to push ourselves and remain accountable. And now, here we stand, one test away from our goals. Term after term, our cohort has continued to impress. We weren't the cheeky outspoken cohort or the ones motivated by champagne. We were the ones steadfast in our learning and committed to our end goals. Yeah, what we have been through pales in comparison to the injustices that black and indigenous people of color face every day in this country. While we struggle to come to terms with our education moving online, they struggle to go to the corner store, to go for a run, or even to sleep in their own beds at night and not lose their lives. As nurses, we are called to recognize and cry out that racism is a public health crisis that systemic health inequities persist for minority populations here in the U.S., and that is not okay. In light of the ongoing pandemic and COVID-19 restrictions, I'm sorry that we can't be together today for this beautiful moment, but I hope that you're able to share it with your loved ones, the very people who endured and supported us through an incredibly grueling transition in our lives. A big, big thank you to all of them. And thank you all for your patience and flexibility. When the very pinnacle of everything we were working towards, those parts when we would finally get to flex our nursing muscles and take on more than one patient, our critical care and immersion clinicals moved online. During these unprecedented times, remember that you have the power to help lift up the voices of black and indigenous people of color and speak out against unjust systems. You have the grace to help change this world for the better. As president of the Rush University Student Nurses Association, I would normally have the honor of presenting an exceptional member of our cohort with an award recognizing their achievements and dedication to nursing. Instead, this year, the SNA board has elected to honor our graduating cohort by redirecting these funds to Brave Space Alliance, a Black-led, trans-led local organization chosen by Rush students during this year's Juneteenth celebration. Brave Space Alliance fills a gap on Chicago's south and west side by supporting LGBTQ health, wellness, and visibility. In our new normal, let us move forward with the strength of this program behind us, taking comfort in the tool belt that we have, heavy with the fluency of nursing terminology, time management, communication, and team building skills, and our clinical expertise. I am so proud to be a part of this fierce, driven, and inspiring group of nurses. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to represent you. In the wise words of the late representative and civil rights activist, John Lewis, do not get lost in a sea of despair. Be hopeful, be optimistic. Our struggle is not the struggle of a day, a week, a month, or a year. It is the struggle of a lifetime. Never ever be afraid to make some noise and get in good trouble, necessary trouble. And good trouble is something we must all aspire to create. Congratulations, GEM Cohort 24. You are already great nurses in my book. Let's go and make some good trouble. B. 
Beatriz Acosta. Agnieszka Alley. Kenny Asperez. Caitlin Bailey. Lauren Baronis. Michelle Barsky. Kayla Brown. Amanda Brunges. Andrew Bruss. Kimberly Carlson. Amy Castillo. Shijioke Shira. Rebecca Cole. Haley Colton. Devin Daly. Mallory Dixon. Keith Ecker. Marissa Foster. Samantha Freshly. Marissa Garcia. Kyla Greenfield. Liat Gross. Carolyn Harker. Sabina Hedlova. Kirsten Hendrickson. Jose Herrera. Destiny Hoganson Olson. Cynthia Howe. Ann Huynh. Catherine Iseris. Bailey Jones. Natalie K. Unbi Lu. Kaylee Levine. Elizabeth Lee. Alyssa McKay. Elizabeth Marr. Adeshola McCormick. Lauren McIntosh. Nicole Mikulski. Dorika Moore. Megan Muller. Josephine Needs. Danitza Oberdovic. Cassidy Olson. Arthi Parikh. Daniel Perry. Trang Pham. Paulina Purs. Elizabeth Rimey. Alexander Roberti. Jared Rudolph. Francesca Ruggles. Taylor Shell. Brianna Sepulveda. Rachel Shefchek. Teresa Shurar. Jessica Solomon. Rachel Subramanian. Alicia Such. 
Malika Suleiman. Taylor Tatro. Samantha Tienda. Haley Walker. Kelsey Wild. Stephen Weimer. Rachel Winter. John Wonderlick. Daniel Zaretsky. Hello everyone. Thank you for this honor of being a virtual pinner today for your convocation. Usually as a faculty pinner, I have an opportunity as your name is called to place that very special rush pin on your white lab coat lapel and then give you a great big hug. Today, I am sending you my warmest, most enthusiastic congratulations on a job well done. Each of you has accomplished amazing things during a, a difficult program in a difficult time. You should be proud of yourselves. I know I'm proud of you. As you leave Rush, I wanna send you with two final thoughts. One thought is actually a challenge and the challenge is to be courageous. Each of us knows that courage means stepping outside your comfort zone. It means facing your fear and doing it anyway. It means doing things you never thought you could do. I've seen this kind of courage in each of you. When you came to orientation and you heard and absorbed everything that we talked about and you heard about the program and yet you still showed up for day one of the program term one. You showed up term two and three and four and five and six. This is courage. Now more than ever, moral courage in nursing and in life is an imperative. My challenge to you is that you will do what is right and what is just. You will speak up for those who cannot speak up for themselves. You will say something if you see something and you will be the change. Cohort 24, congratulations. My final thought is this. <gasps> Congratulations. Hello and congratulations to the class of 2020. Thank you for selecting me to be your pinner. I'm very honored. And of course, I wish that I could be there with you, but current situations prevent that. So we'll adapt. I'd like you to take your pin and hand it to a family member or friend who's nearby and have them pin it to your left shirt collar. Nursing has been a challenging, adventurous and wonderful career for me. And I truly hope the same of you. Congratulations, Rush University College of Nursing graduates of 2020. As the assistant dean of this program, it is my distinct privilege and honor to be among the first to congratulate you. I know you have made many sacrifices to make this day happen, but I can say with all confidence that as you experience the joy and privilege of being a rush nurse you will know that this is the best investment that you have ever made i thank you cohort 24 for choosing rush and i congratulate you congratulations cohort 24.